So when you look at the syllabus, you'll see that under the topic, impact of societal institutions on Caribbean people, you had different things that you had to look at. You had to look at the, the family, the impact of the family. Um, you had to look at uh, what else was there? Education, the impact of education on society. And one of those things was the religion. So under, the, under this topic where we're looking at religion, the syllabus specifically asks to evaluate the ways in which societal institutions impact on their lives. And in this case, that the societal institution that we are looking at is religion. So basically, the syllabus wants us to evaluate the ways in which religion impact on Caribbean lives, on life, on Caribbean society, culture, on the lives of Caribbean people. Okay, that is what it is asking us to do. And again, the syllabus specified that we're looking at African, Asian, European derived and syncretic religion. So we need to understand what were the different religions that came to the Caribbean that are being practiced in the Caribbean. And more importantly, this is the part that you really need to know is how does religion impact on Caribbean, um, Caribbean people and society, okay? So yes, you need to know the different religions, but not, you just need to know the different religions enough to be able to use them as examples in your essay. The, the core of this topic is to evaluate the ways in which it impact on lives. So we have to stress the impact on lives part. Now, when we're talking about religions, let's start way back to, the first early set of um, people that we had on the religions that they practice. So we had the indigenous people and you would have gone through this under historical processes. We, have in, we had the indigenous peoples, the Tainos and the Kalinagos and all the different groups who settled in the Caribbean region. And they believed in religion. They believed in spirits. Most of the tribes had um, shamans or priests. Some groups believed in it more than others, but, uh, but at some level, they all practiced some form of religion, okay? And um, they usually worship nature. So you would see, for example, where they had sun god and um, they worship thunder and they worship the sea and things like that. And their religion is what we refer to as polytheistic. That is, they believed in more than one God. And they worship at an individual level. And some tribes had communal worship. So the Kalinago, for example, they believed that religion was more of an individual thing. But the Tainos had large communal worships before they went off to um, to raid other tribes or before they went off the attacks uh, to, to retaliate to the Spanish who were um, trying to enslave them or before they went on hunting or fishing trips. So religion was important from pre-Columbian period. Okay, with the arrival of the Europeans though, with the arrival of Columbus and the Spanish, and the Caribbean started to become colonized by different religious groups. This is from the 15th century onwards. Sorry, the fourth, yeah, the 15th century onwards. We see the arrival of Christianity, specifically Roman Catholicism, which was brought by the Spanish and the French colonizers, and Anglican, which came with the English and the Dutch colonizers. Okay, and remember, Different countries were colonized by different Europeans at different times. So we have the influence in some cases of both of them. In case of Trinidad, for example, we started off as Spanish and we had the French coming in during the cedular population. So Roman Catholicism was the dominant religion. Then when we became an English colony, a British colony, we had the introduction of Anglican religion. And then later on in the Caribbean, we see different groups coming in. 
um, groups such as the Protestants, Presbyterians from the Scottish Presbyterian missionaries, the Canadian Presbyterian missionaries, they all came into the Caribbean region. Then later on, by the 1800s, we see the emergence of what we call non-conformist churches. Those churches that were not considered orthodox, that were not considered mainstream, okay? That deviated from the standard established religions such as Roman Catholic and Anglican and Protestants. And those were some examples of those were the Moravian, the Methodist and Baptist, and there were different types of Baptists. So when we're talking about European religions, we're talking about the, the arrival of Christianity in the Caribbean. Okay, then in addition to European religions, we had the introduction of African religions because from the 1600s onwards, we had enslaved Africans who were transported directly from Africa to the Caribbean and they brought with them their indigenous religions. So examples are voodoo, which is practiced um, to a large extent in Haiti, Kumina in Jamaica, Santera in Cuba, and Orisha in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so we have these African indigenous religions that have remained more or less in the form that it was transported from Africa to the Caribbean and that continue to be practiced still today. And alongside those African religions, we have other religions that emerged um, that have, have their root in African indigenous religions, but um, merged or adopted some parts of Christianity to form a new religion or a religion that would be distinct from how it was practiced in Africa. And examples of these would be spiritual Baptist and Shango, which are Yoruba in origin. And they, when they arrived when they, in the Caribbean, they mixed or they adopted some aspect of Ro Roman Catholicism and they became, um, they developed as new religions. So we have the European religions, Christi different version of Christianity. Then we have the African indigenous religions such as voodoo and so on. And then we have the African religions that, uh, that uh, merge with Roman Catholicism to produce distinct ones such as spiritual Baptist and Shango. Okay, so there is religious diversity in the Caribbean. In many countries, they all coexist. Do you have the traditional um, Christian churches such as the Roman Catholic, Catholic and the Anglican and so on? And they coexist alongside the African indigenous religions or the, the new ones that form such as spiritual Baptist and Shango. So you have, as I said, religious diversity in the Caribbean. Now added to that, we also had the introduction of Indian religions that came with the Indian indentured laborers. We have Hinduism, 80% of all the indentured laborers who arrived in, in, in Trinidad, for example, were Hindus. So this was the first time that Hinduism was brought to the Caribbean and um, it continues to be practiced today in countries such as Trinidad and Guyana and Suriname. Okay, then we have Islam. Now, Islam did not come first come with the, um, with the indented laborers. Islam was first introduced in the Caribbean with the enslaved Africans. There was a tribe of enslaved Africans called the Madingo tribe and um, they practiced Islam. So Islam was first introduced when they were brought as slaves to work on the plantation, okay? And what we see happening though, is that there were very small numbers. So at the time of slavery, we had very low numbers of, of Muslims in the Caribbean. But when in 1838, when we first started bringing Indian indented laborers into Guyana and then 1845 to Trinidad, and then that continued in all the other countries and most of the other countries, we see where a larger number of Muslims came into the Caribbean. 
So although Islam was first introduced for the Madingo slaves, the number of Muslim increased with the immigration of Indian indentured laborers. Okay, and they continue to be practiced. Islam is practiced in the Caribbean countries today. We also had very small groups of Jain, Jains who practice Jainism and very small groups of Sikhs who also came during indentiship. So when you look at all the different religions that come, we see again, and I repeated, there is religious diversity in Caribbean countries. Okay, and um, I sent you a handout on religion. So that handout would give you information that you could use as your examples. Remember I said when you're writing, when we're talking about the impact of religion, we need to always have examples to back it up. So that will give you, that handout have details on the different religious groups that I mentioned. And it gives you um, examples, some more details about them and examples that you can use. Now, one that, that handout also have a note on Rastafarianism, a religion that emerged later on and that is practiced today. It was made, it emerged in Jamaica and it was made popular by Bob Marley. And it is um, practiced even today, and it has been transported outside of the Caribbean so that it is practiced internationally. And at this point, I need to mention to you the term diaspora. So you would see ever so often a question might ask you, um, discuss the impact of religion on Caribbean societies and the Caribbean diaspora. The diaspora, the Caribbean diaspora, is people from the Caribbean who live outside of the Caribbean. So we have migration from Caribbean countries. And in the 1960s, for example, there was a, um, a high, high cases of migration from St. Lucia to England. In the 1980s, we had a large number of Trinbagonians who migrated to North America, specifically the US. And, and Canada as well. So we do have migration of Caribbean people to regions outside of the Caribbean. And they are what we refer to as the Caribbean diaspora. So if you get a question, any question, not necessarily for religion, that asks you to discuss the impact on the Caribbean diaspora, let's say the impact of sports on the Caribbean as well as the Caribbean diaspora, you are talking about the people from the Caribbean who live outside of the Caribbean. Okay, so these religions that I'm talking about, I was talking to you about Rastafarianism. Rastafarianism is practiced um, with, by the Caribbean diaspora. So there are Rastas who have, to, who, who have migrated, who have spread the Rastafarianism as a religion outside of the Caribbean in places such as North America, as far as Europe. And when we talk about the diaspora, that's who we're talking about. Okay, so these were the different groups of religions that um, we have here in the Caribbean, the different types of religions and the different groups that brought them into the Caribbean. Now, the, the focus of this topic is, the, according to the syllabus, is on the word impact. We want to look at the impact of religion on Caribbean lives. Okay, so yes, you needed to get a history of the different religions. And yes, you need to know a basic idea of what these different religions are how it is celebrated, who came into, who brought it in, and so on. But more importantly, we need to understand how religion impacts on our everyday life in the Caribbean. Okay, and for us to understand that, um, I came up with, I think it's about seven or eight points because I anticipate, I hope I am right, but I anticipate that your question on religion will be discuss the impact of religion on Caribbean societies and culture. Okay, I am keeping my fingers crossed as that is the question that you get because if that question come, you will have all the points for it. So let's look at how religion has impacted on Caribbean people, on Caribbean life. So the first point, religion has a direct impact on education. 
And when you're talking about this point on education, we are talking about the denominational schools. We're talking about the fact that different religious groups, different religions have um, established schools. And a good example is throughout the Caribbean, actually, you have Catholic schools, you have Anglican schools. In Trinidad, there's such a wide diversity. We have uh, Muslim schools, Hindu schools, Presbyterian schools. We have a spiritual Baptist school. So when we're talking about the direct impact on education, you will have to explain and say that different religious groups have established um, schools. And you will, you will mention, you will talk about the fact that to some extent they have um, control over curriculum. Um, so many of these, for example, if they teach in religious knowledge, they will focus on the religion of the school. We will talk about things like behavior, the impact of religion on study ethics and behavior and discipline. You know, certain schools, for again, many of the board schools are seen as prestige schools because they perform very well in CXC and CAPE. And um, it, it can be argued that their performance is not just because they get the best of the students or the students who have performed the um, highest at this SEA level, but also because of the behavior and discipline that they try to command and control in their schools. Also because of their focus on study, on study ethics. You know, um, students from the prestige schools are pushed to, to focus more on their on the curriculum. Um, in most of the prestige schools, there's a push towards getting scholarships, towards academic excellence. So when you're talking about a religion and a direct impact on education, you are talking about things like that. Okay. The second one, religion can impact the social behavior of Caribbean people. And when we're talking about social behavior, we are talking about things like morals and ethics. You know, how does religion influence people's life? By controlling social behavior or by dictating social behavior. Dictating is actually the, the correct word to use. By, you know, for example, um, certain religions specify that you should dress in a specific way. If you are dressed in a, in a revealing way, it's frowned upon by the religion, religious organization, it's frowned upon by the, by the churches and the mosques and the temples and so on. So religion basically um, tries to regulate behavior, it tries to regulate dress, it tries to dictate the morals and ethics that individuals should follow okay and for this for example you can talk about your your own churches or your own religion and how does your religion really try to to impact on on um social behavior by morals and ethics what does your religion or what does your church teach that expects you to um that expect you to follow in terms of these different things Okay, so this particular question on religion, you especially for impact on social behavior, use examples that you are familiar with. If you attend churches, if you attend mosque, temple, whatever it is, if you follow a certain religion, how does that religion try to regulate your social behavior? Or how does that religion impact on your social behavior, dictates your social behavior? What are the expectations of how you behave in terms of dress and behavior and morals and ethics and who you socialize with and who you interact with, who you are, are expected to marry, things like that. Okay, so for religion, we're talking about all those things for impact, religion impact on social behavior. The third point is religion influences various aspects of Caribbean culture. And in this way, we're talking about religion influence on music and dance and literature. And it does so in two ways. One, by providing a subject matter for artists. 
Okay, so it provides a subject matter. It, it, it basically, for example, with gospel music, a gospel singer will sing about um, the, the words in the gospel, will sing about, you know, what the Bible teaches or what the proper behavior and things like that. So it provides a subject as well as it provides an avenue for artists to showcase their cultures. How does it do that? There might be gospel concerts. They might be able to perform in the churches and the temples and the mosques and so on. So when we're talking about religion influences aspects of Caribbean culture, you're talking about, you know, how does dance and music and literature and all those things, how are they showcased through a particular religion? You know, how, how does a church or a mosque or a temple encourage artists? to perform, whether it's to sing religious songs or in the case of Hinduism, whether it's to sing um, bhajans and so on. In the case of Christianity, whether it's to sing gospel. So religion influences various aspects of Caribbean culture. That's the third point. The fourth point, Religion can be used to facilitate and promote cultural diversity at a national level. Okay, so religion can be used to facilitate and promote cultural diversity at a national level. And there are two excellent examples of this. One is Christmas. Christmas is, Christmas came out of Christianity, but it is celebrated at a national level. Okay, so when we're talking about cultural diversity and when we're talking about um, celebrations at a national level, we're looking for those celebrations that are public holidays, for example. In Trinidad and Guyana, we have Diwali, which are public holidays and which we see persons of different ethnic groups, as well as persons of different religious groups participating in these. So we, we want to talk about that. We talk about Eid al-Fitr, which is also a national holiday in Trinidad. And again, you will have Muslims who will invite their friends over. Their friends may not necessarily be fellow Muslims. Okay, so when we're talking about promoting cultural diversity, we're talking about those countries where there is a diversity of religion and good examples of those a Trinidad, um, a good example, a perfect example of that actually is Trinidad and Tobago, where you have a multi-ethnic and multi-religious population and where you have national holidays for different religious groups, whether it's Hindus with Diwali, it's Muslim with Eid al-Fitr, it's Christians with Corpus Christi. Okay, so cultural diversity at that level so that's the fourth point. Religion can be used to facilitate and promote cultural diversity. The fifth point, religion can help in the preservation of a country's history and heritage. And the best example of this that you again can use for your countries, all those national monuments that you have in your country, or all those historic sites that you have in your country that are, that are religious in nature, for example, all the churches, the, cut, the cathedral in Port of Spain in Trinidad. Okay, most of the Caribbean countries have these beautiful old churches, many of which are heritage and national heritage sites. And we talk, when we talk about preservation of a country history, we talk about that. If you're using, for example, a church, if let's say we're using the example of the cathedral in Port of Spain, or any other church than any one of the other islands, then you go, you explain it by talking about the fact that, you know, Roman Catholicism or Anglican or whatever came with whichever European group, it continues to be practiced today. Um, churches such as, and you list them, um, heritage sites today, there are monuments that tourists will visit when they come to our country, you know, things like that, okay? So you have to make your example personal for those. Look at the ones, look at the, the, the your country's heritage sites 
on national monuments and see which of them apply to this topic that you can use as examples. Okay, number six, religion impacts on gender identity in the Caribbean. And this is one that we have been seeing more and more discussions about. So for example, the LGBT movement have been trying and trying to get more acceptance, to advocate for rights for the LGBT groups. And on the other hand, we see where religious organizations or established religions, such as um, Catholics and Anglicans, as well as Hindus and Muslims, are against that promotion of L LGBT rights and freedom and so on. Okay, so when we're talking about gender identity, we're talking more about the restrictions. The restrictions on the L LGBT movement or the LGBT groups because um, they are, because the churches or religious groups are against it. Okay, we're talking about things like homophobia and the fact that it is seen as outside the teachings of the church, for example, or outside of religious teachings. So, and the fact that it is not as accepted because of religious uh, beliefs. So that would be number six, religion impacts on gender identity in the Caribbean. Number seven, religion impacts on diet. Sorry, there's a typo there. Religion impacts on diet and health. And for example, good examples for these, Hindus do not eat beef because they consider the, south, the um, cows as sacred. Muslims do not eat pork because they avoid the, the, the pig. Um, Christians, some Christian groups, not all, some Christian groups fast for the Lenten period. Rastafarianism promotes vegetarianism. So you have things like that. There's a direct relationship between religion and diet and health. And in most cases, it's because the various religion teach certain specific things when it comes to diet. And these are good examples that you can use. Okay, number eight, religion can lead to a narrow perspective on behavior and lifestyle. And this is another more negative impact. So when I spoke about religion impacts on gender identity, that was one of the negative impact. And this is another negative impact. Religion can lead to a narrow perspective on behavior and lifestyle. Religious people can be judgmental. They can be seen as narrow-minded. They're not open to inclusion of others who are seen as different. For example, the LGBT movement or LGBT groups. There's a superiority complex where, you know, when um, there are many, many religions that believe that they're better than others, or because a person, an individual goes to church or temple or mosque, they, they have this idea that they're superior to others. So when we're talking about a narrow perspective on behavior and lifestyle, this is what we're talking about. That sense of judgmental narrow-mindedness that could be influenced by religious uh, perspectives, okay? So you have eight points here, eight full points that you can use. If, if an essay comes for 20 marks, you can pull any four or five of those points and you can develop them into an essay. If an essay comes for 30 marks, you have enough points to be able to write a full essay on, on it. 